The story of the Titanic is as famous as it gets. This timeless vessel sailed and met its end in the night between April 14th and April 15th, 1912. There were over 2,200 people on board and more than 1,500 tragically lost their lives. In this video, we will check out some of the most shocking discoveries on the Titanic wreck. Twenty, three bells of Titanic. On July 3rd, 2019, a significant discovery was brought to light, the ship's colossal whistles. Back in the days of the construction, these whistles were the maritime heralds, weighing a hefty 750 pounds or 340 kilograms each and standing over four feet or a meter tall. Crafted from bronze, these giants were composed of three chambers, creating the commanding voice of the ship. Routine dictated that these whistles would sound daily at noon, adhering to White Star Line Company procedures and announcing departures from ports. Yet, their most frequent calls pierced through fog and poor visibility, signaling the ship's presence to other vessels. A lesser-known innovation aboard the Olympic-class liners was the automated whistle-blowing system on the bridge, sparing officers from mundane tasks during voyages and allowing them to focus on other duties. Fast forward to 1993, and a salvage expedition by RMST Incorporation unearthed a set of Titanic's whistles from the debris. These relics, having endured years beneath the waves, underwent meticulous restoration. In 1999, they took center stage at an RMS Titanic Incorporation exhibition in St. Paul, Minnesota, USA. However, for this exhibition, caution prevailed. Instead of steam, compressed air was used to blow the whistles, avoiding the risk of permanent damage. The organizers were expecting a crowd of about 2,000 people. To their astonishment, an estimated 100,000 people flocked to witness the historic event, most likely because of the movie's popularity. 19. Titanic Coal In the summer of 2019, another significant artifact surfaced, coal from the ship's engine room. This coal tells a silent story of the ship's power and the labor that fueled its engines. The Titanic relied on two steam engines and one steam turbine, producing a formidable 46,000 horsepower. To sustain this power, 600 tons or 550 tons of coal were consumed daily. The task of fueling the Titanic fell upon the shoulders of one 76 fireman who toiled around the clock, shoveling coal into the furnaces by hand. Despite being well paid for that time at six pounds a month, the relentless labor took a toll, leading to high suicide rates among the firemen. The coal they shoveled produced 100 tons or 90 tons of ash daily, which was then discarded into the ocean. The firemen faced a harrowing situation. Engineers instructed them to stay below decks, venting as much steam as possible. Unfortunately, Less than a quarter of the firemen survived the sinking. The coal recovered in 1994, now part of the Ripley collection, serves as a link to the Titanic's engines and the labor that powered them. However, the quest for souvenirs has taken its toll on the wreck. Irreparable damage caused by souvenir hunting tourists led to the collapse of the Crow's Nest Tower during the retrieval of the ship's bell. Consequently, UNESCO has granted the Titanic Wreck World Heritage Site protections to safeguard its historical significance. 18. Luxury Necklace In a discovery during the most extensive underwater scan of the Titanic wreckage, a necklace made from a megalodon tooth emerged among the debris. A pair of submarines were used for the monumental task, resulting in the first comprehensive digital scan of the luxury ship. This project was the largest underwater scan ever conducted, generating over 700,000 images to compile a detailed scan of the Titanic site. Amid the wreckage, a captivating detail stood out, a turquoise and gold necklace 
adorned with the tooth of a megalodon, a shark species that roamed the oceans around 20 million years ago. Despite this remarkable find, they faced a legal obstacle preventing them from recovering the necklace. An agreement between the UK and the US prohibited the removal of artifacts from the Titanic's crash site by the public. Now, the company aims to utilize AI-driven technology to identify the family members of the passenger who wore the necklace on the ocean liner. The proposed technology will analyze footage of passengers boarding the ship, employing facial recognition technology to catalog their clothing on the day of embarkation. By pinpointing the passenger who wore the Megalodon tooth necklace, the analysts can locate the living relatives of the original owner. 17. Chair In a recent auction in England, a Titanic deck chair fetched over $150,000 or just over €135,000. This chair was once a part of the first-class deck on the ship, and it has found a new home, continuing its journey through time. This particular deck chair has a compelling story to tell. Recovered more than a century ago from the wreckage of the Titanic, it carries the weight of history. The journey of this deck chair doesn't end with the sinking of the Titanic. In 1912, it was spotted floating on the surface of the ocean by a crew dispatched to recover bodies from the wreckage. It became a relic of that event, symbolizing both the tragedy and the resilience. Originally belonging to a member of the recovery crew, this deck chair then made its way into the possession of an English Titanic collector. For the past 15 years, it has become a display item in the collector's home. Now changing hands once again, this time through the auctioneer Henry Aldridge and Son, the deck chair has found an unnamed collector in the UK 16, Silver Spoon. In 2017, at Chiswick Auctions, a silver spoon from the Titanic's Café Parisienne took center stage. This piece of silverware, a sugar sifter to be exact, has a story behind it that unraveled a real-life drama. The renowned underwater archaeologist Bob Ballard, who discovered the Titanic wreck in the 1980s, had initially intended to leave the site untouched, considering it a graveyard. However, the parent company of the shipping line gave the green light for salvage operations, leading to the recovery of numerous artifacts, including a purse's bag with jewelry items commemorating the centenary of the Titanic's sinking in 2012. What made this silver sifter unique was its unconventional journey. It was not on board when the Titanic met its tragic end. Instead, it had been stolen, along with a decanter and other objects, before the ship set sail on its maiden voyage. The culprit behind this pre-voyage theft was Reginald, Well Barker, a purser who had sailed with the ship from Belfast to Southampton. Reginald's motivation for the theft was a twist of fate. Eager to join the voyage, but unable to afford his uniform, he resorted to stealing items from the Titanic. These ill-gotten gains were then exchanged with a tailor named Horace Bradshaw in return for the dress uniform Barker needed. Despite the illicit means, he successfully enlisted for the voyage, a journey that would cost him his life when the Titanic sank. 15. Wallace Hartley Violin A violin played by the Titanic's band leader during the ship's sinking sold for a staggering $1.7 million or 1.5 million euros at auction. This price marked a record in Titanic memorabilia. The violin, once in the hands of band leader Wallace Hartley, played a role as the Titanic met its tragic fate. Survivors recounted how Wallace and his band provided music to soothe passengers, even as the ship descended beneath the waves. His body, recovered days after, had his violin case still strapped to his back. The damaged violin, however, surfaced in 2006, found in the attic of a British home. Its authenticity was verified through testing of saltwater deposits and an engraved silver plate connected it definitively to Hartley. The auction in England witnessed the violin changing hands, though the names of the seller and buyer remained undisclosed. 14. Bowler Hat 
In 1993, a rather ordinary yet significant item emerged from the titanic wreckage, a brown bowler adorned with a grosgrain ribbon. This hat represented the standard day attire for men during the era of the Titanic. The hat was found in close proximity to a seemingly random assortment of luggage. The exact location of it provides a subtle detail about the circumstances surrounding its presence on the ship. In the early 20th century, a brown bowler hat was a common accessory for men. Its recovery from the Titanic wreckage not only serves as a link to the past, but also offers a glimpse into the lives and routines of individuals on board during that time. While the man who once wore this bowler hat remains unknown, the artifact itself represents all upper-class men from that time. 13. Boots Nestled within the depths of the Titanic wreckage lies a poignant relic, a pair of boots that once belonged to William Henry Allen, a 35-year-old toolmaker. William Henry Allen, a skilled toolmaker, carried his belongings in a leather suitcase, which became the final resting place for these sturdy boots. He was a man preparing for a new life, perhaps in pursuit of better opportunities across the ocean. Third-class passengers on the Titanic faced different challenges than their wealthier counterparts. For them, the journey was not one of luxury, but a pursuit of dreams and aspirations. 12. No human remains. Resting at the bottom of the North Atlantic for over a century, the RMS Titanic conceals mysteries about its late passengers that continue to captivate the experts. Among the questions is the matter of the lack of human remains at the Titanic wreck site, particularly indicated by the abundance of shoes and boots found in the depths. When the Titanic succumbed to the iceberg, just over 30% of its passengers and crew managed to survive. The less fortunate, especially those in third class, faced a devastatingly low survival rate of less than a quarter, making it through the disaster. The absence of skeletons in the Titanic raises questions about the fate of the bodies. While some were discovered floating in life jackets, a significant number remained unaccounted for. What happened to the other 1,160 passengers and crew members who disappeared beneath the waves. Photos, revealing boots and a coat surrounded by sand on the ocean floor, ignite discussions about potential underwater bodies, yet ethical concerns arise regarding the exploration of these areas, considering the Titanic wreck as an underwater gravesite. The question lingers. Should there be a search for bodies? The Titanic, already resting in the North Atlantic for over a century, is slowly succumbing to the passage of time. While some argue that searching for bodies could offer closure to families, others stress the importance of treating historical sites like the Titanic with the utmost respect. 11. Perfume This is one of the most unique discoveries from the Titanic wreckage, this aromatic treasure came in the form of a leather pouch, carefully safeguarding dozens of vials of rare perfume oil lost by a German perfumer, Adolf Saalfeld. Adolf, racing to the lifeboats during the Titanic's tragic sinking, left behind his life's work, a collection of scents that would later be unearthed by divers exploring the debris. The salvage expert, Dick Barton, described the moment of discovery as remarkable, with a strong, flowery odor permeating the ship as they surfaced with the leather pouch. The company holding the salvage rights to the Titanic wreckage, RMS Titanic Inc., saw an opportunity to turn this forgotten aroma into a marketable scent, creating a unique memento for Titanic enthusiasts. Talks began with manufacturers, including the renowned creator of Calvin Klein's CK1, to produce the Titanic perfume. 10. Carpet As the Titanic was undergoing its final touches in Belfast, a bedroom steward named Frederick Dent Ray had a peculiar encounter with a first-class stateroom on sea deck. While observing a carpet layer at work, he noticed several small discarded scraps of green carpeting lying in a corner. These remnants, deemed too insignificant for any practical use, 
caught his attention. Fred sought permission to take these seemingly inconsequential carpet scraps home. It was a decision that would later weave an unexpected thread into Titanic's history. Surviving the infamous sinking, Ray returned home with these overlooked fragments. Once there, he embarked on a project for his wife, crafting a piano stool. He realized that a scrap of Titanic carpeting, once deemed too small for any practical application, could serve as the perfect padding for the seat of the stool. The existence of this unassuming carpet fragment became a forgotten anecdote. Decades passed, and after celebrating his 90th birthday, he found himself packing up the piano stool. Little did he know that this task would unveil a piece of the past. 9. Titanic Victim's Pocket Watch Sinai Cantor, a 34-year-old man from modern-day Belarus, embarked on the Titanic voyage with his wife, Miriam. Their destination was New York City, where they hoped to start a new chapter of their lives. Unfortunately, Sinai, among the 1,503 passengers who lost their lives in the icy waters of the Atlantic, left behind only a few belongings. Among the possessions were a small telescope, corkscrew, notebook, and a pocket watch. After his body was recovered, all of his personal items had mysteriously vanished by the time of his burial. It wasn't until the following year that Miriam, who had survived, managed to recover the belongings, including the precious pocket watch. Sinai's pocket watch held sentimental value for Miriam. Recently, a direct descendant decided to part with it, putting Sinai's watch up for auction through heritage auctions. The online bidding started at $22,000 or 20,000 euros, gaining momentum with the final bid of $57,500 or 52,500 euros coming from John Miotel, a California museum owner known for his collection of timepieces from the Titanic. 8. Brandy Flask In the recent auction, a silver brandy flask from the Titanic era fetched an impressive $98,000, which is just under 90,000 euros. Owned by first-class passenger Helen Churchill Candy, the flask bore her family's coat of arms and a motto, faithful but unfortunate. As the disaster unfolded, Helen, a prolific author and women's rights pioneer, handed the flask to her friend and fellow first-class passenger Edward Kent, expressing that he had a better chance of getting out. Unfortunately, Ed did not survive, and his belongings, including the engraved flask, were returned to his wife. Subsequently, the flask found its way back to Helen, who had survived the tragedy. In a letter, the widow of Edward Kent described the flask as badly out of shape. This note accompanied the flask when it was returned. The flask remained in the Candy family's possession until 2005 when it was sold at an auction. 7. A 15-ton section of the ship Weighing in at a staggering 15 tons or 13.5 tons, this mammoth section of the ship's shell plating was hoisted from the wreckage in August 1998, making it the largest piece ever salvaged. Measuring almost 27 feet or 8.2 meters in length, the big piece spanned from frame 38A to 29A, with each frame representing a three-foot interval and serving as one of the 300-plus ribs forming the hull structure. Positioned on the right side, this shell plating fragment extended from the top of the portholes on the D deck to the upper reaches of the C deck. This section played a crucial role in the outer wall construction of staterooms, complete with bathrooms. It formed the upper section of the first and second class kitchen. Additionally, it housed a glassware storage room. Six last meal menu. In an unexpected twist, the last first-class lunch menu from the RMS Titanic was auctioned online and surpassed all expectations by fetching $88,000 or €80,000. The menu presented a lavish array of offerings, including grilled mutton chops and custard pudding. What makes this menu a big piece of Titanic lore is its journey through the hands of Abraham Lincoln Salomon, a New York businessman 
and a first-class passenger. Abraham found himself in the midst of the chaos as the Titanic faced its tragic demise. Faced with a life-altering decision, Abraham, along with a select few, embarked on a lifeboat that would later be notorious as the Money Boat or Millionaire's Boat. Rumors suggested that one of the passengers had allegedly bribed the crew to prioritize their safety over rescuing others. As the Titanic slipped, Abraham clutched onto this menu, perhaps as a link to the final moments of normal before the calamity unfolded. Adding a personal touch to this historical artifact, the back of the menu holds the pencil signature of another first-class passenger, Isaac Gerald Frauenthal. Over a century after Titanic sank, it emerged for sale through a New York auction house, listed by an unidentified individual claiming to be a descendant of one of the survivors of the money boat. 5. Keys A set of keys from the Titanic, once belonging to Samuel Ernest Hemming, the lamp trimmer aboard the ship, fetched an impressive $26,400 or €24,000. Samuel Hemming was a seasoned sailor with a career spanning decades. He was 43 years old when the Titanic tragedy happened, and as a survivor of the tragedy, he played a crucial role during the U.S. senatorial inquiry into the disaster. His responsibilities on the ship were diverse, from mixing paint to overseeing the ship's decks, trimming lamps, and managing the illumination on board during nighttime. On that night, Sam was jolted awake by the impact of the iceberg. Quickly identifying an issue with the exhaust tank, he reported it to his chief officer, but underestimated the severity of the damage. It wasn't until later, when the ship's joiner and the boatswain informed him of the imminent danger, that he realized the severity of the situation. Sam rushed to the deck and actively participated in preparing and loading lifeboats. His dedication extended to ensuring each lifeboat was equipped with lamps before they were lowered into the frigid, dark waters. He stayed on board after the main lifeboats had departed. As he readied a collapsible lifeboat on the roof, the Titanic succumbed. Sam, finding himself in the water, was eventually rescued by lifeboat number four. Fortunately, he recovered fully and returned to England, residing in Southampton with his wife Elizabeth until his passing in 1928. 4. A Letter A letter written by Steward Richard Geddes, detailing a near-miss just days before the ship's tragic sinking was found. The handwritten letter, sent to his wife a day after leaving Southampton, narrates a close encounter with another ship, the SS City of New York, as the Titanic departed the docks. Richard wrote that they got away after a lot of trouble. The letter, penned on Titanic stationery and posted in a white star line envelope, survived the tragic sinking, and Richard sadly was among those who lost their lives when the ship met its demise four days later. Reports suggest that some viewed this near miss as a bad omen, possibly anticipating the challenges that lay ahead. Richard's letter not only captures a personal perspective, but also raises the question of how this incident might have altered the course of the Titanic's journey to New York. In 2019, the letter went on auction in Devizes, Wiltshire. Auctioneer Andrew Aldridge highlighted its exceptional nature. The auction package included official paperwork related to Mr. Geddes, providing a view of his connection to the Titanic. While the exact amount the letter fetched remains undisclosed, experts valued it at up to $23,000 or €21,000. 3. Cherub A small bronze cherub from the Grand Staircase was found. This particular cherub was perched at the base of the A-deck staircase. The story of the cherub takes a turn as speculation arises that in the frenzy, someone might have clung to the base. The force of the water may have loosened the cherub from its foundation, setting it adrift. Years later, in the debris field at the bottom of the ocean, the bronze cherub was rediscovered. The cherub, once buried in the sand between the bow and stern of the ship, embarked on a journey of conservation. 
From the ocean floor, it made its way to Santa Fe, New Mexico, where it underwent a two-year chemical bath to remove salt and ensure its preservation. Now, for the first time, this cherub took center stage at the Titanic exhibition at the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. Two, bacteria living on Titanic wreck. The Titanic has become an unexpected home for a unique form of life. A species of bacteria named Halomonas titanicae in honor of the ship has found its niche within the rusticles that cling to the Titanic's remains. These rusticles, icicle-like growths of rust, adorn the hull. Within these formations, the bacteria thrive by consuming the iron. It's a slow process, natural recycling of the ship's materials, as these bacteria gradually break down the iron, contributing to the formation of rusticles and ultimately recycling the nutrients back into the ocean ecosystem. The very vessel that once sailed across the ocean has become a microcosm of life, where bacterial colonies play a vital role in the decomposition of the metal structure. As these bacteria continue to feed on the Titanic's iron, they contribute to the ongoing transformation of the ship. Bacterial activity not only highlights the circle of life, but also poses questions about the future of the Titanic wreck. 1. Champagne While the Titanic itself did not carry the tradition of breaking a bottle of champagne upon its launch, it holds a unique connection to the world of vintage drinks. The tale begins with the discovery of champagne on board the Jongkoping, a ship sunk by a German submarine in 1916. In 1997, at a depth of 210 feet, or 65 meters, 5,000 bottles of Heidzik's Gout American Champagne from the 1907 vintage were found preserved. This particular champagne mirrors the brand and year that the Titanic was carrying when it met its tragic fate. Priced at over a quarter million dollars, or 200,000 euros, this champagne is now on sale. In 2002, an Australian company, Wine Flyers International, claimed to have sourced and sold six bottles of wine from the Titanic to a high-profile customer in Asia. Which discovery was the most shocking to you? Let us know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos that we made, click on one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.